Hi, and welcome to Preview. My name is Guy Giampapo. Preview. 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 Five, four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Preview. My name is Guy Giampapa. Well, we have a great show for you today. Do you remember the, uh, a show called Forever Plaid at the Statler Hotel many, many years ago? Well, there's a great revival coming up at, in Wakefield, and we have some of the stars of that show, and we're going to talk to them in a few minutes. But first, let's talk about theater. Carousel. June was really busting out all over recently when the Regal Music Theatre of Boston opened the season with an enormously successful version of Rodgers and Hammerstein's classic musical Carousel. And why wouldn't it be successful? Time magazine called it the best musical of the 20th century. With Ernie Award winners Jennifer Ellis and Lee Barrett featured along with the sensational Broadway actor Kieran Sheehan, Carousel was the perfect show in a recent edition of Preview. I had the great pleasure of, ch of chatting with these three principals of the show. It was a genuine thrill to see them in performance. Rachel Bertone, also an Ernie Award winner, directed and choreographed this show. She is well known among theatergoers in Boston as well as New York. Her choreography in Carousel was based on that of Agnes DeMille with some of her own original touches. The Regal Music Theatre of Boston is celebrating its 48th year. Producing artistic director Bob Eagle founded the Regal Players in 1969 and has produced and directed over 300 productions during his career. He's been recognized by the American Theatre Wing and has been cited for his outstanding achievement in the arts and education by Boston College and the Catholic University of America. Not bad for a guy who has just given us the best musical of the 20th century. Carousel at Regal is a sure winner. Well, Matilda. She is only four feet five inches tall and she's the smallest leading lady on Broadway and now in Boston. I'm talking about the nine-year-old Sarah McKinley Austin, who is currently alternating the role of Matilda with two other children. Young Sarah was featured in the role on, on opening night here in Boston, and she is absolutely fabulous. How many child actors do you know that can pull off a role such as this one? Matilda is the story of a little girl who has been bullied by domineering parents. They call her a lousy little worm, but they are so wrong. Little Matilda stands up for what she believes is right. However, her parents have a different take on the little girl. She's sent to, uh, off to the Crunchin Hall Elementary School, where she receives the same treatment from the child-hating headmistress, Miss Trunchbull, brilliantly played by Dan Chaperone. But all is not lost for little Matilda. She's taken under the wing of Miss Honey, who understands the ways of the gifted child. Uh, we have some scenes from the show that we're going to show you as we talk. Matilda is based on the book by Ro Roald Dahl, who specialized in children's books. However, I feel Matilda is not a story for little children, although I noticed several in the audience. My only fault with this production was the sound. In speaking to others at intermission, I learned several people told me they couldn't hear the dialogue. I have never had that problem with the audio level at the Opera House before. Hopefully that problem has been solved and Matilda will, will enjoy this Boston run. The good news for you folks down in the Plymouth area. The Americana Theater is com Company is presenting the 1951 rock musical Grease from July 7th to the 23rd. For this happy and tuneful production, you should dust off your leather jacket, put on your bobby socks, and take a trip to a simpler time as bad boy Danny and the girl next door Sandy fall in love all over again. This Broadway hit features all the unforgettable songs from the hit movie Guaranteed to Excite You. Award-winning guest director Marianne Civell partners with Americana veteran Derek Martin as choreographer and local favorite music director Nancy Sparkin, uh, who lead a cast of 15 professional actors and 10, co 10 college interns hailing from California, Alabama, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and New York. Don't miss seeing Greece at the, at the Spire Center for the Performing Arts. That's 25 and a half Court Street in, in Plymouth. For more information, visit www.americanatheater.org or call 508-591-0282. Okay, now let's talk to our guests. We have, a, we have a, one, two, three, four guests today. Well, five if you want to include Lee Barrett, who's sitting out there in the audience. <laughs> But, uh, and, and we're going to ask her to come on camera later. But, but right now, let's talk about these guys here. Peter Miller, you're Lee Barrett's husband. I am, I am uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Lee Barrett. You're Mr. Uh, Lee Barrett, okay. <laughs> and you and Lee are producing for a plaid 
We have, we are, and uh, this is a, it's been a dream of mine for a while to uh, really? to, to bring this show uh, to uh, to well to these uh, these young people in, in particular. What was your uh, reason for doing that? Um, Back in 1990, I first encountered this show, and I fell in love with it completely. Uh, the, uh, the the close harmony and the uh, the story that the show tells is really just uh, uh, really important to me, um, and um, I got uh, such joy from doing this show and directing this show over the years, uh, and I wanted to make sure that uh, that these people could also discover it. And it's a really really fun show. Uh, it's um, um, it's this uh, it's easy to see this show as just a musical review, mm -hmm. but uh, it's actually um, these four characters bringing the music that they loved mm -hmm. uh, to, to a modern audience. Um, and that's the way the story gets told, is the, uh, the music and the message in the music uh, and uh, you know, the joy that they had making the music uh, back in the 1960s. But you had a love of the songs of that era. Oh, Did that help absolutely. That convince you to do the show? Absolutely. And it's funny that you mentioned Greece uh, earlier in your oh, yeah. review, because uh, this is really the story about all those other people. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the non-greasers, the, the non-rock and rollers. Right. This is the story of you know, the young men who you know, carried around a, a pocket handkerchief and you know, shined their shoes. <laughs> uh, and. Um, you know, listen to the really the music of that generation that came before mm -hmm. uh, the rock and rollers. So you know, groups like the the Four Aces and the Four Lads, oh, uh, yeah. and um, uh, and so these uh, these guys are uh, are really of a different time, and uh, it's a time that's a really sort of a, a forgotten. It's a bit of a footnote because mm -hmm. rock and roll uh, eclipsed this uh, right. this particular music so completely. You had Elvis Presley coming in. You know, while right after that, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, and you know the the groups like those, you know, the the Four Aces, the Four Lads, mm -hmm. uh, the Four Freshmen, um, you know, who are you know not forgotten to history, but uh, really, you know, once rock and roll came in, the, that music started to take a backseat. We we see some of this music now on PBS, the music of that particular era, yeah, it's which really is so lovely. It really yeah. is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you've brought along uh, three of the four guys that are mm -hmm. playing in. Uh, in, uh, gr in, I was going to say Greece, <laughs> and, <Forever Club. laughs> and, and the first one is your son, and his name is Matt. Oh, That's Matt, right, yeah. Matt okay. Miller, one of the many Matts in the show. One of the many Matts <laughs> in the show. Now you play Sparky, right, Matt? Yeah, that's right. Okay, mm -hmm. tell me something about the role. Well, I, uh, I kind of, well, with kind of all, <laughs> with all of us in the show, they're kind of we, uh, each of us are a lot like our characters. Um, I. Uh, Sparky is sort of the he's the he's kind of the class clown, yeah. he, you know. He's the he's the cut up of the group, um, and uh, he's he's the one who's always trying to make the, other, the rest of the group and the audience laugh, like no matter what. Um, <laughs> even in you know some of the moments in the show, they have a little more sentimentality, which I think is which I can really relate to, you know. And I um, really like that about him. And but at the same time, he has a lot of heart and compassion, and he just loves to make the music that. Him and his friends make, and it's good. Did you 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 know you come from a theater family? Yeah. Did you grow up uh, loving this type of uh, this type of a life, you know, acting and music and all that? Yeah. Well, so I didn't really I didn't really start you know getting into it myself until you know so, uh, I'm like eighth grade, but you know obviously I grew up going to see these shows and it was it was, it was hard not to sort of you know. Have well, this Matt, Matt may not want to mention this, but uh, there's, there's, you know, I have in my memory this this picture of him backstage <laughs> at Forever Plaid uh, during one of the productions yeah. we did in the in the 2000s, and uh, you know, uh, him and his brother, uh, you know, just <laughs> back there, you know, peeking through the curtains. Uh, so it's it's fun to see the you know uh, transform uh, th th uh, forward through time. It's like it sounds like something out of a movie, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> it really is. It's the whole it's come full circle here. <laughs> uh, well, okay. Let's talk to the uh, the second Matt, uh, who's playing Smudge. Hi, Matt. Hi. Tell me something about uh, how you got into this role and so forth. Well, um, um, uh, of course, I got into this role through Mr. Miller. Um, so Smudge is really the the warrior of the group, which is something I think most of us can relate to, but I definitely can. Um, he he's worried about everything, like 
coming up on time, which is definitely something I worry about, like the props, the set list. He's worried about all of it. But he, and he doesn't really want to do the show in the beginning. But then he winds up, of course, sticking around because he wants to be with all his friends. And by the end of the show, he's the one who doesn't want it to be over. Um, he's also the base of the group. And he's dyslexic and left-handed and mixes up his left and right frequently throughout the show. Well, you have, you have quite a background. You, you've done you've done theater before. I have, yeah. Okay, tell me about some of the uh, roles you've had. Um, earlier this year, um, in the winter, I was in uh, Around the World in 80 Days, which was a straight play. I was Phileas Fogg, who's the lead character who's wow. going around the world in 80 days. Um, last summer, I was in Into the Woods. I was the baker, which is probably my favorite role. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That was directed by Lee Barrett. Lee Barrett okay. Um, and who these two guys were also in. <laughs> like your favorite role before Smudge, of course. Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. Um, of course. And then um, in August, I'm going to be in a production of The Drowsy Chaperone, which is also directed by <laughs> Lee Barrett. <laughs> um, I'm playing the man in the chair. What is this, the Lee Barrett show? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm also active in our drama club at the high school. I've had, I've had numerous great roles in there. Where, where have you played these roles? Up in your hometown? Um, yeah. Um, All of them? Yeah. Mo I've mostly done theater at my high school. Um, we did a summer intensive last year in Wakefield, which is where I did Into the Woods. And yeah. I'm doing another one in Wakefield with Dresden Chaperone. Um, I've, I've also done theater camps growing up over the summers. Do you hope to pursue this as you uh, <laughs> grow up? Um, I'm, I'm not so much grow. interested <laughs> in, in being on stage as doing um, theatrical design stuff. So um, oh. I'm probably looking to go to school for scenic design or just any sort of theatrical well, design. Well, that's very interesting. Do you, have, do you have a school in mind? Um, not really. I'm still looking around this summer no. to find places. Well, there are so many fine schools in the area. Yeah, there really I mean, are. you won't have any problem with that. Okay. Well, now let's talk to uh, the third man, who, who is not a Matt. He's, exactly. We have Matt Bat and we have Travis. <laughs> yes. Hi, Travis. Hello. How are you? I'm quite well. How are you? Tell me about yourself. Um, well, I'm just thrilled to be here. Uh, this is such a great show, and I've, I've liked this show, you know, for years. And then Mr. Miller asked us, hey, what would you guys think about being in Forever Plot? And I said, you're kidding. <laughs> and, uh, but he was, he was totally serious, and we're, we're doing it, and it's so much fun. It's a very fun show. Do you, do you plan to pursue your theater career? I plan to continue with theater. I'm not looking for a career in theater, but I definitely I love it, and I hope to continue it in college and beyond. Yeah. I understand in your resume it said something about biology. Yeah, I, I love science. That's really? one thing that I'm particularly interested in, is biology. Can you, do you think you can mix the two together? I mean, <laughs> I'm more than willing to try. Yeah. I'm not sure how I'll do that. You know, there, maybe there's a, a musical about uh, a microscope out there somewhere that's waiting to be written. It'd be able to be me. <laughs> well, okay. Now, uh, there are three of the four guys. Who, the fourth guy, unfortunately, could not be here. Uh, maybe, Peter, you can tell me something about him. Uh, sure. So the, uh, the, the, fourth, uh, the, the third Matt and the, and the okay. fourth uh, plaid um, is, the, is Matt Knowles. Mm -hmm. And he's playing the character of Jinx, who's the, the high tenor of the group. Um, so just the parts are, uh, so you've got Jenks, who's the high tenor. Uh, you've got uh, Frankie, uh, who's, the, um, who's the, the, next, uh, the next voice part down. Uh, and you've got Sparky, uh, who's uh, here, my man. Oh, yeah. uh, and then you have Smudge, who's the bass. Uh, <laughs> and Smudge is the part that I, that I played, so I have a particularly uh, a fond, uh, fond recollection of okay, that. But yeah. the, they're all, um, the, all the characters do these, uh, these fun and unique things in the show and, uh, and really bring different aspects mm -hmm. of... Uh, of, um, of you know, personality to the show. So uh, Matt Knowles, who uh, who plays Jinx, um, is a is a, a you know good friend of this uh, of, of the quartet, uh, and um, he's um, uh, 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 he's actually the only uh, the only uh, member of the group who's uh, who's not from Reading. Um, he grew up in Danvers. Danvers. Danvers thank you. Okay, um, nearby. Yes, nearby. Yeah. Um, uh, but is a is a, a great friend of, uh, of of the three of these uh, characters, um, and. Just so happened, uh, you know, the, we we got the voice parts and the characters just right um, uh, for all for all four of these guys. Did you do the casting? Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, so I yes, I did do the casting, but the casting kind of uh, happened organically. You did so. um, it? Uh, we it uh, over the course of about a year, I started to just see things fall together in terms of you know the right voice parts, the right personalities. Um, the right skills, 
Um, and uh, so we started just working on the music uh, slowly in our in our in our living room, and I could just see it coming together. And then uh, and then uh, a few months ago, Lee and I were like, okay, we, we need to do this. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so we decided to make it happen. But there's uh, but there's more to it than that. I mean, you had to get an orchestra. You had to get uh, a facility. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, the uh, the logistics of uh, of Putting together a production, or uh, it's, it's, you know, as you know, it's not uh, easy. Yeah, not easy. Know. There's a, you know, there's securing the rights. Mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, that's a, that's the important mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's finding the uh, finding the right space to do it in, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we think the 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 space that we found is perfect for it. Um, it's the the Wakefield Linfield United Methodist Church. And they have um, a facility in the church. They do. They do. They have this uh, this wonderful uh, wonderful space. Um, it's a theater space. is used by some other uh, mm. theater companies around the area, um, and the stage is really just the right size for this show. Um, the plaid wants to be done in a space um, that is you know intimate. It's, I was um, going to say yeah, intimate. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, uh, where because the, it's um, it's very much includes the audience. It's not like an audience participation show, yeah. but it is um, the audience is part of the show in that they are witnessing uh, uh, a, a journey for these uh, for mm -hmm. these four young men, and they um, you know the closer the the audience can be to the action, uh, the better. Um, so you know I've seen plaid done in very large spaces, and when it's done there, it can feel a little like a musical review. When it's done in a smaller, more intimate space, it's uh, very much everyone's just carried along. It works better, doesn't it, in a small space? It does. It does yeah. very much so. Because I can recall mm -hmm. when I saw it at the old Statler Hotel, mm -hmm. um, it's more than 20 years ago, before it became the Park Plaza. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was done in a small, intimate. Uh, yeah, area. I remember that very well. Yeah. Um, and the, you know, the so the and they made a big effort, the same that we're doing to uh, to. You know, pull the space in mm. um, so that the you know the characters aren't just swimming around on the stage. Yeah. They're very close to all the stage elements. Uh, the pianist is really just a few feet behind mm. them. They interact with the pianist and the bass player a lot throughout the show. Pianist, oh, yeah. pianist, who we should mention is um, oh, yeah. the the third Matt's uncle, who hails from Wakefield. Oh, Joe okay. He's our Joe Nutio is our music director. Yeah. Oh, so it's really, it's really, a, it's a family affair <laughs> <laughs> in every, in every possible <laughs> way. <laughs> it's, the only thing missing is the barn. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what well, I think was was pretty awesome about when uh, we decided that it was going to like actually happen was like sort of the the rallying of like you know all all four of our families and friends all like you know who have certain skill sets and like or access to certain things were like sure I can make that happen for yeah. this production so everyone sort of came together yeah. so like. Like uh, you know, and Smudge here did the uh, graphic design for the whole show. Um, so, so he made our poster and uh, a lot of these little. Um, so there's a point in the show where we had these album covers that the Plaids made themselves. Yeah. Um, so he uh, he made all those for us. Designed by this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think our audience would like to see uh, some scenes that you folks brought. Uh, oh yeah. Some scenes yeah. from the show. Let's go to that now. Which one will the fountain bless? Three hearts in the fountain, each heart longing for its home. There they lie in the fountain, Ooh, where? somewhere in the heart of Rome. Which one will the fountain bless? Which one will the fountain bless? Three hearts in the fountain, through the ripples how they shine. Just one wish will be granted, Ooh, one heart will wear a valentine. Make it mine, make it mine, make it mine. That well, was, you, yeah. you guys are smooth. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> really, very good. That was uh, a rehearsal. That was, yeah, that, was, that was a couple weeks yeah. ago. Was, yeah. Okay. But we, We're it still gives working. us a good idea of what the yeah. show is about. It's got, it's got yeah, some moves song now. Song. It's got mm -hmm. choreography. So it's, it's, a real, it's, a real, it's a real show now. Yeah. It's really come together incredibly well. The harmony is only the beginning. Mm -hmm. What are some of the problems you had in the show by, by, uh, during rehearsal? Um, well, I've always been pretty terrible at harmonizing. <laughs> um, no, and with, with the help of Joe and Pete, I've actually I've really come a long way in learning parts, and now I can 
I can almost improvise some harmonies. Yeah. But like, yeah, yeah this show has definitely brought me a long way. I've definitely overcome that. I was awful. I still am, but. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, oh, oh it's, <laughs> it's well, it's tough. It's it's pretty tough music, especially you know it's when it's just the four of you. Um, and so it, it so much relies on everybody knowing their parts right. so well. Um, and, and that's true for the music and the choreography. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. it's pretty unlike anything I yeah. think any of us have ever done before, and we really, we've, we've yeah. grown a lot through working on yeah, this. Yeah, I've, I've never been in a musical with this small of a cast. Yeah. yeah. This is about well, It's always the first bit. time. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And the, the other thing about the cast in this show is that there, though there are four people, there's hardly any individual work going on, it's all as yeah. a group. So you have to be completely yeah, in sync. Yeah. You yeah. have to be in unison all the right. time. You know, you know. How big is the orchestra? Two. two. Yeah, uh, just piano a, and a bass. Yeah. Just the two instruments, mm -hmm. that's all. Yeah, and that's traditional oh. for this show. Is, yeah, um, see, I don't, I don't remember, it's so, so long ago. It's, uh, the, the idea is that they've come back to, uh, uh, to just a small nightclub, mm -hmm. um, and that it would be the, uh, the, same, uh, the same orchestration that, uh, that you might have seen back in, you know, in 1964 yeah. for them. Which really just the, you know, the pianist who came with the room uh, and, a, and, a, and a bass <laughs> oh, yeah, player. Sure. Yeah. 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 And how long does the show run in, uh, in time? Uh, about an hour and a half? 90 minutes, I'd say. About yeah. 90 minutes. That's about, yeah, that's reasonable. Intermission. Yeah, we, 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 yeah, we split into two acts. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And... Uh, no, it doesn't... It doesn't yeah. It's no. not very long, and it's especially one thing about the show is that it does not drag on. No. Yeah. yeah. There's no dragging at all. Good. It's that's very, good to know. And so much it's mostly music, actually. Yeah. But it's so much more than just, like, it never feels like you're watching a concert because it has these mm -hmm. four distinct characters and, like, so many, so many bits on top of that. It's a very funny yeah. show. It's very yeah. funny. Um, yeah, there's so many little, little subtle things you have to. Yeah, and each and each number has like some sort of exciting like it. It's like you know the choreography or the uh, you know there's there's instruments played. Right. It's yeah. very, well, the awesome. most important thing is the uh, the play dates of the show and where it's playing. And Peter, I'll ask you to tell us. Yes, yeah, certainly. So it's uh, July 15, 16, and seventeen. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's at 7.30, 7.30, and then uh, on, the seven, on, the, the, on the 17th, there's a, a, a matinee, mm -hmm. and it's at the Wakefield Linfield United Methodist Church okay. at 273 Vernon Street, uh, Wakefield, Massachusetts. And tickets are available at ticketstage.com. Very good. And they could just get into that number and get tickets. Mm -hmm. That's the easy way to do it. Well, that's great. Well, you know, just before we close, I'm going to ask Lee Barrett, who is sitting uh, in our audience, if she'll come up and come in the back here and just say hello to us all. Hello. It's really our pleasure to have <laughs> an actress as great as Lee Barrett. Oh, you're thank very you kind. For, thank you Thanks, for doing guys. this. Thanks for having us all on here. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a pleasure, and um, we're so happy to be here this morning. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that you, uh, that you came up, <laughs> you know, and I, I wish you all great success with this show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, come see it. I'll try. I'll Love try. That. The dates again are July 15th, 15, 16th, 16, and 17th. Okay. So we've got three dates plus a matinee on which day? Um, the Sunday, seven, um, the 17th, the seven, that's yep. 3 o'clock. Okay. okay, I'll remember that. Yeah. All right. Well, well I'll remind you. You'll do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much, uh, Peter, Matt, Matt. And Travis. And Matt. And Matt. And Matt. And, Matt. and, our, and our missing Matt. It and of course, Lee Barrett, who is uh, just a great, great person. <laughs> Thanks so Thank much you. for all of you for being on our show. Thank well, you, that's guys. our show for this time. Uh, you've been watching Preview. My name is Guy Giampapa, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>